No, they do TikTok things. Well, I deleted my TikTok <gasps> a while ago. Best thing I ever did. What are you vlogging? Hello, it is Wednesday afternoon. I just got back from a grocery store and I don't know what's compelling me, but I wanna do a little grocery haul. So I mostly shop at Trader Joe's for like dry goods and stuff like that. Like today I got chickpeas from there, but um, for produce and like luxury items, I go to Berkeley Bowl um in berkeley and it if you have ever had the joy of experiencing it it's truly life-changing experience <laughs> like i love that grocery store i talk about this all the time <laughs> the best produce ever great prices um their other stuff is expensive but um i have certain splurge well it's like they're not splurges because I get them every time I go grocery shopping. <laughs> but they're like the things that I, like the particular brands that I want. Okay, let's just get started. I always get the bread there. I really like Acme. This is the Sour Bacard. I've tried most of their bread. It's delicious. I just try to switch it up every time. Um, with fresh bread, it's always like, a fight to the finish line to finish it before it goes stale. Um, or you can just slice and put it in the freezer. But sometimes I forget to do that. And then the other big ticket item is the Chobani Extra Creamy Oat Milk. This is the best oat milk. It froths so well. This is the other luxury item, which is the Whole Milk Brown Cow Yogurt. Nothing beats the creaminess of this. Like it's so buttery and delicious. So dairy and bread are usually a bit pricier. And then we have this cabbage. Um, this year I discovered they like roasting cabbage. It's so delicious um, and really easy. It like you'll never think of cabbage the same way again okay try it um then we got apples great thing about Berkeley Bowl too is like they're always having a sale on produce that they're like trying to get rid of like these bell peppers which you know like they're gonna be on their way out but I got them great deal serrano chilies lemons um, got this bag of kale, got some arugula. What's nice about this place too is you can choose how much you want to get. Um, I am using these plastic bags, unfortunately. We do reuse them though a lot. But, um, like, instead of like with Trader Joe's where everything, all the produce is packaged. I mean, not just Trader Joe's, like a lot of American grocery stores. Um, three avocados in varying degrees of ripeness. And then cucumbers and king oyster mushrooms. I have been craving these. Um, this was pretty small. I usually, like, I will probably go back again in a couple days. Oh, and like a thing of ginger. I'm going to try to make this and the um, lemon orzo tonight from Cook This Book by Molly Baz, which I am borrowing from the library, which is a great way to um, explore cookbooks and take pictures um, of the recipes you like without having to actually purchase. Ooh, this looks really good too. So we'll see how it turns out. I just did my eyebrows um, and it's itching and red. So don't look at that. <laughs> um, I am reporting to you from a Thursday. 
it a Thursday, which I woke up at 5 a.m. Just one of those nights where you know you're gonna fall back asleep. Um, so I've been up for a while, have my second coffee of the day. Um, and I am really strongly procrastinating applying for jobs right now. So I am letting myself talk about these books and then I will get to it, okay? The other thing is I have to admit to the crime of having these library books pass their due date. Um, yeah, so these are two Billy Ray Belcourt books. Um, so I read A History of My Brief Body a couple days ago and I wrote like a review um, thing on Instagram that I will link, but I felt like very mid about, the, or like, I, I don't know, it's almost hard to kind for me to kind of review this because I feel like there was just a lot of distance between me as a reader and what the author was trying to do where I feel like that distance wasn't quite bridged um, and I'm not sure if that if that response but like where if that's like me as a reader the author like what's going on or like the the writing itself like what the problem was it's a collection of essays um I mean it defies genre in a lot of ways it's just kind of um really poetic lyrical kind of experimental writing on I mean just the themes that arise from experiencing life as a queer indigenous Canadian poet, writer, thinker. Um, yeah, it's a collection of essays and vignettes on grief, colonial violence, joy, love, and queerness. I think for me, the main issue was like, I mean, this is all about, I think, kind of like, how much the writing wants to be like accessible or not, which is can be kind of problematic in this sense because from the get-go, he's he kind of like opens this collection and is talking about the like the limits of using of trying to use English, which is so full of like colonial violence, to like describe to like to write and to describe what he wants to describe, like how like that paradox. Um, so in a lot of ways this book isn't really concerned about being understood but in in to the full extent that it can be understood or by everyone to like the largest audience like and i i understand that and i appreciate that and maybe if i as a reader was coming to this book with personal experiences that like more connected to what the author is talking about maybe I could understand it more, but I also feel like, I don't know, this book was opaque in a way that it didn't need to be in order to get the same thing across, in the sense like, there's all these footnotes, um, to, that, that, oh, there's all these footnotes that like reference to academic theory, um, like various like queer theory, post-colonial theory, you know, uh, that stuff which is great but it's like he doesn't he doesn't explain it it's literally just a footnote and that's it maybe a parentheses like parentheses judith butler like <laughs> you need to explain it more than that like i just feel like that is really at that point just like don't include the footnote you know like i don't know i just felt like this things those types of things could have been explained more given a little bit more context and then also, it's like the, the issue with the footnotes on top of writing that's already really lyrical, already experimenting with form and already fragmentary. So it's like, you're already starting, <laughs> like, it's not just like a typical narrative with like a footnote. It's like, yeah, I don't know if I'm, I, I like, I, I'm not really explaining it super well right now, but um, I mean, like the the preface, I cried, you know, and I, I really enjoyed the chapter on um, his insight into the um, rates of suicide um, in like indigenous populations in Canada. I thought that was really beautifully written, like 
there were some great moments, but the majority of this just like didn't quite work for me. Um, and so I had gotten this book to read as well. Um, and I was going to just not read it because I didn't really get along with this one as much, but, um, I was like, you know, it is only like 150 pages and I could avoid the library for one more day and finish this in a day. So I've decided to do that because I was compelled. I read like a few pages and I was compelled. And I think the concept of this is interesting. This is like, um, kind of auto fiction concept of a queer indigenous doctoral student steps away from his dissertation to write a novel. Um, and I am thinking it is like based off of his own experiences and he goes back to his hometown. It's in like rural Northern Al Alberta. And this book feels like, it just feels so much more grounded. I'm already, I'm 50 pages in, I'm already enjoying it a lot more than a history of my brief body and I think a lot of the like lyricism and just like the potential in the writing that I saw with the collection of essays I feel like it has like better roots with this not like novel if that makes sense like there's just a, a bit more of a structure for like the writing to I don't know come off better for me and there is a little bit more description of academic sources um it's not just footnotes so it, it, it's an improvement and I'm glad I like took a chance on this because I just felt like I wanted to like the writing yeah that's my spiel on this and now I have to actually do that job application that I don't want to do um but yeah I will check back with how I'm doing with the minor chords. I'm back in the same location um, the day after a previous clip um, where I was talking about these two and I just finished a minor chorus. Um, I finished it in two days, not one. Um, but I loved this. Um, shocking turn of events. I didn't really like this, but I loved this one. Um, yeah, I think it might be one of my favorites of the year. I don't know, that's kind of crazy to say, but um, this is Billy Ray Belcourt's novel, which came after this collection of essays. Where was I going with this? This book is about the narrator trying to write a novel about the people and the place that he comes from, um, like instead of writing his dissertation. And I mean, it was beautiful. It just felt like because you have this premise of like this writer going back to their hometown and then having these conversations with, um, like their family members, old friends, community members, it just feel, it feels more grounded because there's like characters, there's like a sense of purpose, even though the narrator is like constantly questioning um, like the right way to do things and the story is inquisitive, but it's like, it just didn't feel like it was really up in the clouds, like too abstract, I think. He's going back to the reservation he grew up on um, and just kind of trying to put together a story of the people that he grew up with who he sees as people who aren't able to like narrativize their own life um, or not, not able, just aren't necessarily given a chance to, to like create these stories um and so he wants to kind of like attempt to to like create this collective story uh, all centering around his cousin jack he's a cousin caught in the cycle of police violence drugs and survival um yeah i it was great <laughs> like i i i 
genuinely just finished reading this so um oh one thing i wrote down actually was that so he references two references that i enjoyed in this book were Chiel Hetty's motherhood which i think is referenced in the collection of essays as well and i really liked what he said about mothers motherhood the other one is um, he references Rachel Cusk, and what I wanted to say is that this book actually, it feels similar parallel to Outline by Rachel Cusk in the sense that they're both books that are um, following an autofictional story where the narrator slash writer is going on a trip and having these like long meditative conversations with people, except in this case, he it's not necessarily strangers or to a place that that's new to him he's going back to people he knows and to a place he knows or used to know um and yeah it 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 had the outline vibe i'll put it that way um and for that reason and many others i really enjoyed this like it really hit. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, maybe I also read this at, a, at the right time. I feel like it, your experience with books is so based off of the timing of it and like I'm just feeling really lost and don't know what to do with myself and like the character is lost and decides to break away from his PhD and like go pursue this project and I was like wow that's cool <laughs> um <laughs> wow that's cool um yeah I I usually with authors I either know like I know if I, I'm gonna like them and I'm like I like them or I don't like them and with this one I liked one piece like one book but not the other which is um I don't know if I've experience that so I'm almost pressing that first sip.